process, but we managed to produce a very good result. Um, Alright, so we had several different components that had to do with hardware. Uh, first of all, we have these markers, which we built out of bathroom tiles with um, felt on the bottom so they easily can slide around. Um, so basically, each marker has a different model that is dynamically loaded onto it. So the camera sees uh, pawns and bishops and horses and kings and all of our chess pieces. Uh, then we have our main uh, big pieces which either tell the piece to become an attack or to resurrect after dying in case the user makes a, a stupid mistake. Um, also to do with our physical setup, we have a board that we spent many hours on um, cutting out each individual hole. Uh, we had a like, little template thing to draw on one big piece. So this is one big piece except for one smaller piece. There's a seam right here. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's one piece and we cut out each hole and then we have a bristol board to put on the black squares. Uh, also, for hardware, we have our camera, uh, which sees the augmented reality on the computer. So we finally settled for this old school looking Logitech camera, which works perfectly and is able to see everything. Okay, so we used uh, Goblin X and A and Alvar markers to make our game. The first thing we had to do was install Alvar and Goblin X and A onto the computer. And then we had to generate um, a calibration file for the camera. We first we tried it using a, a PS3i, that wouldn't work, and then we tried three or four other camera types and they wouldn't work, and finally we figured out that we had to use a Logitech camera. And then we had to generate all the different marker images. Each marker has a number, and there's thousands of markers, and what you do is you just run this program that comes with Alvar, you type in the number that you want and click enter and it will generate the image in a folder and you just go grab that image and print it off. And then we had to uh, program marker collision and the last thing we had to do was program animations so that they would be loaded onto the markers. The art for this project started with the concept art for the chess pieces. Um, we tried to keep the designs really low poly so that the program would be really light and the pieces wouldn't look too funny when they were modeled. Um, so we made them look like a blocky statue with a really angular style um, to keep the models really low poly. To make the user interface, it was painted in Adobe Photoshop but sketched first by hand. Um, we tried to follow the fantasy theme that we had established with all of our chess pieces. Four sections, uh, there's a welcome and intro section with a pretty epic painting of a dragon. Um, a setup section, which teaches the user how to use the augmented reality version of chess. Um, an in-screen menu, which allows the user to exit the game and access the setup information. And an end screen, which is basically just shown when the user wins or loses the game. From there we moved into creating our models. A model was created in Autodesk Maya for each character, and then they were rigged. <laughs> and finally, two sets of animations were created for these models. One for the attack animation and one for the death animation. <laughs> Come over here, <laughs> you can see our chessboard with all of the markers, one for each chess piece. And we have a computer screen which shows what the user can see in the reality world as opposed to the physical world where it's just a chessboard with a bunch of weird markers. We also have some uh, special pieces that help us make sure that we know what piece is attacking and also one in case a user kills the wrong piece, we can resurrect him and bring him back to life to play more in the game. For example, we shall show a pawn killing another pawn. So you take the pawn piece 
and put it next to the attack zone where the, um, the piece turns to the color red to signify that it has now entered the attack mode. You bring it back to the board and then you can place it on top of the other one where one will attack and one will die. Once it's finished attacking, it will return back to its normal player mode and you can replace the piece and put the other one onto the side where it continues to stay dead and smoke. Every piece of the chess game has its own death and its own attack. Adding uniqueness to the game. So there, the bishop just killed the knight. The knight is smoking, so it can be taken off the board and replaced with the bishop piece, which is now back into play. And it attacks, and the pawn dies. And then it turns back to white, which means that it is now in normal playing mode, and it can resume in the play, and the death one gets taken off the board, and it continues to die and smoke. Thank you.